Welcome back to Crib Talk. Imagine trying to build a home in Los Cabos when you don't live here. All the trials and the tribulations and the trust factor on the developers who are building your homes. You know, you're back home and you're having a home built here. So I think this is probably stopping a lot of people from actually building homes here. Everybody just wants to buy a home already built, furnished and all these things. And, and the, the idea and the thought of building a home is, is quite scary because you're not here. You can't manage your own project. There's just no transparency either. So uh, we brought a, a special guest in today, Christian Zapien, and uh, he is a project manager. And I want him to tell us a little bit about project management and what it's all about. So welcome to the show, Christian. Thank you, Lee. Awesome. It's good to have you here. Thank you. Man, I mean, I I've been looking for somebody uh, like you for a long time. We have, you know, I, I would be selling a lot more lots if I had somebody that could build homes and report back to the buyers on how their home is going. Full transparency. I mean, uh, you know, this is something that uh, we really need. And I don't think a lot of people even thought about, um, you know, they're just having just, you know, try to find builders that are building them homes, but they don't, there's no transparency. So what is project management, Christian? Right. Well, project management in construction is actually managing the resources that go into the build. And that can be from labor, workers, uh, suppliers of materials, contractors, builders, permitting, licensing, even design could, could be including the okay. project management and obviously the administration and financial part of the project. Okay. Uh, financial information, things like um, what the supplies uh, cost, like so the concrete for, for example, if you're building a home, everything's here, everything here is in concrete. Uh, you're going to want to see uh, uh, an invoice from the concrete company so you can say, so you, the, 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 um, the, the, the buyer of the lot, you're now your client right. and say, Hey, I want to, I want to know how much the concrete cost on this particular project. Right. Well, it depends a lot of the, uh, the variables, including the deal that you have with your builder or your contractor. So uh, normally we do actually go out and review costs and estimates for, for the owner. Okay. And so uh, we make sure that the prices are within price range in the market okay. and that you pay up what is actually being put into your project. Okay. So, you're, so you guys have a really good idea of what things cost. Uh, so that you know that your client now uh, is not overpaying. Yes. Yes, we help in, in the project to establish the um, price and the budget so you okay. can actually know what the project is going to be costing. And we take care that every week or every two weeks that you make your payment yeah. that are due to exactly what's happening on the project. Okay, so it sounds like transparency is a big thing uh, with, with you guys, with your with your service. You want to make sure that it's transparent so that people feel comfortable that you're not, you know, taking money, uh, you know, in the back door or, or something like that. You've got all, you've got all the invoices here. And so that leads me to the next question is when they build a home and they've got all the costs and, the, and, and all the smoke clears, basically, what are you guys charging over top of what it costs to build the home? Right. Well, when we're taking care of the execution, the management of the actual operation of the project, uh, our cost ranges uh, around 6% of the total cost of the build. Oh, okay. That's not bad at all. So you, you're you not the, the you're not the builder. You're just the guy that's going to manage all the builders. You're going to manage, uh, let's just say, the, the guys that are going to build the foundation. Right. And then the electricians and right. the plumbers. And just like you just said, um, we'll be the, the eyes and the... Uh, audit for the owner who's not in town okay who's taking care of their business right. their life back home whatever they are even mexicans from yeah. the states or canada okay and we're here uh on, on a daily basis on your job making sure everything's happen happening uh, according to plans okay to the schedule and to the budget that you were approved so uh in that sense we're your eyes here so we're taking care of your financial and your project on site. Okay, so so the process from 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 big, beginning to end. Ex explain that. There is there is there a few different uh, levels to the to the process. Right. There's uh, three main stages for us, which is uh, planning, execution, and delivery. Okay. We can come in on any stage on your bill on your project. So uh, just gonna go real quick for for uh, through the three processes. Planning. We can be 
uh, involved in helping out from lot selection, depending on what you actually want. Okay, yeah, that's a good um, one. Managing design. So a lot of people come in with designs from out-of-town architects that okay. propose materials that not necessarily are available here or don't really work well here on the uh, with the uh, environment and stuff. Okay. Uh, and then uh, all the way until you get your licensing and permits from City Hall so you can actually start building and your final quote. Oh, okay. Project. So if if somebody is, is building like something from scratch, you can help them pick out the lot. Mm -hmm. You can help them uh, design a project for the lot. Yeah. You can help them with their permits. Yeah. I mean, you're you're gonna you're gonna take care of all that stuff. So so really, all that they have to worry about is paying the bills. Right. Uh, residential planning is way more easier than a commercial planning. Okay. Like, just like you know, uh, once you get into a, a residential zone or even uh -huh. a post gate community, uh, most of the processes for um, utilities and licensing and stuff, it's already kind of set up because okay. the, the, the the developer already yeah. went through some of the hoops. So it's easier and you have your uh, architectural guidelines. So it's, okay. it's a little bit uh, narrower what you really need to do okay. or what you can uh, navigate through uh, more than actually selecting a lot. Because in in, uh, in a commercial build, mm. some people come in and say like, hey, Kristen, you know, we want to build gondos here. And then yeah. you see a lot, it's like super small lot and okay. it is not going to happen or uh, it's not a, a, an area you can, where you can build lots and okay. stuff. So that's a little more uh, complicated. But yeah. the residential is quite easy, the planning. Okay. And the planning stage would end up of you having your uh, budget and yeah. con or builder and contractors uh, set up yeah. and your building license in hand so okay. you can start building. Now, I, I just thought of another another question here. You know, a lot of these people that are coming here are buying pre-construction with developers mm -hmm. and, you know, and I've, and I've bought even homes myself when I get the delivered product. I'm like, they, they didn't, they didn't do certain things. Like they didn't put pee traps in so that, uh, so that the smell's not coming up and and so I, I would have loved to have some eyes and ears on that, even though I'm trusting the developer to, to do that because I've hired him to do that. A lot of the times they they, they miss those things. And uh, I mean, you got to do some major uh, surgery on the home now to, to get those things put in place. So would you would somebody be able to hire you? Say they were buying a, a condo or a home pre-construction. Could you manage that project as well, being extra eyes and ears on that particular project? Yes, uh, on, on the execution side or, or the second stage of the project management, um, it, it's either having someone uh, have their own project manager, like a big development or a private one, but it, our, our function or service would be yeah. the same of actually being there on site, making sure measurements right. are correct. Now, Procedure I'm, I'm sure that the developers of, of these of these uh, developments would be a little bit, you know, yeah, you know, you're, you're, you're there yeah. and, and so you're now showing them what to do. And to, to do yeah, right we're right definitely right. not the favorite people for exactly. you know, builders and, yes. and, uh, and, and, and developers, but uh, I mean, it's our job is just to point out yeah. um, areas of opportunity and make sure like stuff is getting done All right so, so so in that case it wouldn't be like a, a cost plus situation it would be like they would probably be giving you a salary every month just to go down there and check and, and go through the stages case, yeah. you're not going to be on site all the time you're just going to go down there say every morning to make sure that the things that they did yesterday were 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 done properly. Yeah, in that specific case where there's a, a, a pre-sale uh, or condo that's yeah. being uh, built development, uh, yeah, the the structure of our uh, service kind of varies a little bit because not there's nothing, there's not always something going on, right? You know, exactly. so there's many. It's a long yes. volume of construction, so it's not necessarily that I need to be there every single uh -huh. day. Um, but yeah, that that will work like that. Uh, yeah, we'll, because you know, we'll, like schedule visits, and you'll have a report of uh, proper and fast on your specific. Yeah, area. yeah, because because we do know that a lot of these developers here can be a little slow. They might not be working on your house that day. Yeah, I mean, in, a, in a perfect world, there's ten guys on your house every single day. But you know, yeah, what I, the, I mean, if you're building up, like you have to go through uh, some processes, foundation, yeah. structure, and then utilities and blah blah. Right. So it just kind of makes sense yeah. uh, on 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 their own schedule, you know. Okay. So, but yeah, that's kind of what we do on, on execution. Make sure uh, that on site things are happening as okay. they should, and the deliverable or the setback for or or report for the owners in okay. just a report that's awesome. going to show in pictures and stuff. so that that's going to uh, bring me to my next question which is what types of projects are you guys capable of of managing are, are like i mean there's high rises mm -hmm. commercial buildings 
How is this condos? Yeah, well, we've had the, the, the luck to be working with uh, different um, projects. Uh, either we've helped um, big developers from yeah. from Mexico mainly that want to come down here to Cabo and they need to know the local get around and stuff to, to get their projects built. And we help them out in in, in that strategy. Okay. Uh, we've helped uh, private investors that they want to do like a smallish project of, I don't know, maybe let's say 18, 20, 30 units, you know, and, and yeah. their own uh, uh, investment and their own portfolio of investment. And we help them get through it. And also just residential projects, let's say a family or a couple that want to have yeah. their house here in, in Cabo. And also some locals where um, obviously not everyone's into uh, tourism, you know, and there's yeah. locals that have restaurants and that have uh, they sell wines or they like a, even a, a, a dental clinic that we just built three years ago so that was a very interesting project for a specific but yeah we, we can do uh, all different kind of so you can customize uh your projects to any any restaurants needs or i mean a dental office probably requires a little bit different yeah that was very tech yeah yeah uh, which is great. So what are some of the obstacles that, you know, say, uh, you know, a guy like me, if I was living back home in Canada, would have if I bought a lot here and tried to build myself, but, you know, hired a developer to build my home, like what kind of things could happen? Like, I'm, I've, I've heard lots of stuff. <laughs> um, but in, in your in your experience, uh, what what are the biggest obstacles? Right? Well, I guess the biggest obstacle is the actual distance, first of all, you know, you, you can't really be on site uh, resolving any questions that come up between the builder and the architect and you have to make the calls, you know, so you have to be on site making sure the calls are being made. Another big difference I see is the uh, construction systems that maybe in the States and the Canada are being yeah. used different than Mexico. So a lot of people here that come uh, from abroad are like, yeah, I, I build back home, but it's a different building yeah. system. So we're, t we're used to different processes and yeah. stuff. So that's also something that uh, sometimes the the hardest people to work with are the are the yeah, developers from back home <laughs> because they they seem to know everything. Yeah, and it's like <laughs> being a doctor <laughs> and going to a, to a doctor's appointment. It's, it's complicated. So uh, exactly, I feel like those two are the are, are the main. Um, and obviously, with the distance comes also the the language, you know. So um, it, it, I, even myself, and I see it with Mexicans as well. You know, yeah. sir, in Guadalajara, in Culiacan, in Mexico City. How can I make sure that stuff is happening yeah. and because I'm just taking care of my stuff, my yeah. family, my business, whatever. So do you find that, you know, some of these developers that are building homes are like, well, I got their money and well, you know, m maybe I can, you know, s save myself a little bit of money by, you know, maybe doing this, this concrete thickness a little less thick, you know, like right. maybe like trying to scrimp and scrape in areas where they can make more money. Like, I mean, I could see that being a big problem. Like, you know, I paid for a, a, a you know, this thickness block and they build in this thickness block like right you know you don't really know because you're not here yeah yeah i mean that, that could definitely happen uh people or or contractors cutting corridors uh, i feel like the, the main uh problem or 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 obstacle is always on the operation side where mm -hmm. lands even though you go through them more and more and more, yeah. there's always something when you start overlaying different uh, plans that yeah. something doesn't really add up and that's just construction. That's uh, how it is. So yeah. you got to be solving on site and, and make sure that uh, the solutions are there and they don't compromise uh, the quality of your right. brand and your expectations and the actual design because that's all, also something that normally tends to be cut out. Yes, that the original design and the feeling that you had for, let's say, I don't know, something that you wanted a very special staircase because you want a piece of art there and something's not working right and then just like got out your area for that art piece you know i'm yeah. saying something out of uh, out of the blue but it does make sense you need to take care of that so the actual end product ends up being what you what want wanted, exactly what you yeah. wanted tell me a little bit about the customization process like say you've got you've got your your home build now now there's you know you have you know cabinetry to pick and you know the customizing art uh, how difficult could that be from from a from afar? Uh, it it does tend to be a little bit harder than just walking into a finishes shop and yeah. and just selecting tiles and countertops and stuff. Um, in here overall in in Baja we have a little uh, disadvantage because we operate as an island, right? So yes. everything for construction except for like the actual sand comes from ma mainland. So 
rebar, concrete, tiles, finishes, yes. uh, your faucets, everything, everything. So a lot of the times we're, uh, we're just picking from catalogs and, and websites. We are, but at the same time, we can actually uh, be ordering stuff from the States or from Ghana, like, I don't know, your upgrades, like uh, a fireplace and stuff. Like we can actually order them and, and bring them over here. And, and it just takes a little more planning and logistics involved. Yes. That's the only thing that... But you're not necessarily being able to hold it and touch it before you buy it. Uh, not really. We try to work uh, and, and recommend with uh, to work with suppliers that have representation here on site. Okay, so they, they got the materials here. Not not in inventory, but you can at least see a, a sample. Yeah, yeah. And, exactly. and you know that yeah. there's going to be a warehouse and, and that they're here. Yes. That, or some other suppliers where it's um, uh, justifiable, let's say, in a yeah. gondola development, like you're ordering, I don't know, 20,000 square feet of tile. So we can actually go into a shop or the factory in central Mexico and we can order a full trailer of it because it's going to be welded, okay. you know. But yes. But we already have all that uh, way that we already walked before, so it's easier for you. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, now, uh, you know, on, on a project, what, what are some of the the things that could influence the timeline build of a project? Like, what are things that could hold a project up? In a residential project, I would say definition of finishes, for sure. Uh, I've had experiences where... I don't know, let's say the couple who own the house or who are building the house, they like literally don't agree on something and that's just holding up. Bad communication. Yeah. Um, something else would be uh, specifying something that needs to be, again, like super logistical that has to be uh, ordered on, on, on uh, before time. And that could also hold us back a little bit. Um, and here in Cabo, the weather issue is also something that could get in the way of building. You know, like we're in hurricane season right now, so there's stuff that you actually hold up, you know. So uh, I would say those are the three main um, things or reasons that could hold back. Uh, normally, when you start building, you already have your quote and your budget. So unless you have something happen to you and you don't really comply yeah. with the full budget, Financial is not going to be okay. an issue because the money's going to be flowing and the project's going to... I just I just know like out of experience and, and that I've seen, like, you know, seen a lot of projects. Everything's always late. I don't know if it's, uh, you know, obviously things were influenced even by getting us, you know, like you said, we're like almost on an island. Right. Sometimes getting materials is, uh, is problematic. And so there's a, a project that's just waiting for concrete or even a rebar. Yeah, it so happened. What should people keep in mind when choosing materials for our location in Cobb? Right. Well, my biggest suggestion would be uh, weather resistant materials. Mm. You know, uh, the weather here is super drastic. Like uh, wintertime, you can go uh, at, I don't know, 20 degrees Celsius at night. And then by nine in the morning, it's already 30 degrees Celsius. So that's like, mm. like a 30 percent uh temperature difference in a couple of hours so materials do get struck so there's, a lot by that. So there's, there's an expansion and construct yeah. and contraction and in most of the finish that would be like in the structural side of it and on the finishes our radiation here with the sun is super super strong so yes uh you'll see stuff that or like an outdoor um sunbathing uh bed or something that would last three or four or five years somewhere else here in Cabo, that's something that's gonna maybe last a year or a year and a half you know so yeah. um maintenance on natural wood on the outside for pergolas or uh actual marble on, on your floors and stuff yeah. that's gonna be uh a little more um demanding on okay. on 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 um maintenance can you share with us uh a success story i mean you guys have done a lot of business uh just share us one one uh one one success story and why was it such a success right well um i can use the the example of a small boutique hotel in la paz that we just delivered uh last october actually and uh the owner he's a ceo of a company that serves to all latin america so these guys traveling from monday to friday so he okay he was very complicated with his agenda he's not living here in mex in in, in Cabo, sorry so uh we took him from he came up with a lot already he wanted his boutique hotel bill yeah. so we had to come up with a strategy hand in hand with the architect so we can actually comply with city guidelines so we can have the amount of keys to rent mm -hmm. that he wanted and it all came together very very well um and just um, 
yeah, by the end of the 14 months that it took that project to, to be completed. Okay. Um, he's up and running. He's very happy. How many how many months did it take you to build? And Sorry, how many keys was the project? Uh, we ended up having six keys. Okay. Yeah, it's not, not a big project. But it was four, like a 14 months is, is pretty good because I don't really see anything here being built in 14 months. Yeah. Even a house, like a simple single level three bedroom home right. is like us, you know, an 18 month process. So if you guys build well, like it, it also depends on, on, on the square meters, you know, like, uh -huh. um, it was like about a thousand square meters of construction okay. and, um, that the structure design was pretty simple. Okay. We needed to maximize the space of yeah. the log because it was like a short, small lot and, but it was, it was a good project. So awesome. he, he was, uh, he was happy. He, I guess he was happy because he's recommending us to some other Amazing. Uh, project. Uh, yes. Uh, all you year, get so. referrals, you know, you've done a good job. Yeah. And, and we've been lucky to, to work with him and, 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 and just get recommended by him. So I think that's a good one. That's awesome, man. Okay. So like final question. And, um, I, I just, you know, you, so now that you've got all these managing management projects, you've finished the project the the people are now living in their homes. Uh, what if something goes wrong? Right. Is it, are you guys going to take care of uh, helping them out, helping them out with the warranties? And I'm sure a lot of these developers or the builders that you're working with will offer some sort of a warranty as well. Right. Well, that would be uh, that's a great question because that would be the third stage of project management. Okay. On our all right. So that completes the, the stages. Yeah, delivery and and warranties if needed. You know, so on on the delivery stage, we just make sure that everything is according to the uh, right. quality standard that was expected. Yeah. And uh, let's say appliances, uh, utilities, fixtures, and stuff like that's where where you will have to have a warranty. Right. Okay. So uh, when we start the project, we make sure to, to establish what the warranties will be, how long will they. Be. Is it scary to build a home in in in, in Cabo San Lucas or in Mexico with without being here? It sure can be. But uh, I think we are taking the fear out of building homes here uh, with wonderful people like Christian. So thanks again for no, thank joining us today, Christian. That is awesome. I mean, I feel so much better uh, about that. And I and I was just thinking while we're talking here, I've got a little casita that I'm going to be building in the backyard of my home, and I'm going to have Christian build it, and we're going to record the whole thing from beginning to end, and we can show you very transparently what it cost um, and what uh, Christian's uh, fees and things are, just to guys, give you guys an idea. So stay tuned. Make sure you guys follow uh, you, our, our YouTube page and our Instagram pages, all of our pages, Comment in this uh, you know, on this video if you have any any more questions for for Christian. If there was some questions here that we didn't uh, that we didn't put out there that you'd like to have answered, keep watching, guys. We got more information for you. We'll see you soon. Thanks again, Christian. Thank you, Lear. Bye. See you guys.